All right, now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's start taking a look at this different sets of builds that I wanted to offer you here today. We're going to start off with the cloth line. And the really nice thing about this is one simple set of armor can serve you across many different weapons. If you decide to change later, all the time you spent faming your main armor set hasn't necessarily gone to waste. The primary thing that most people are going to be taking in their head slot is going to be the cleric's cowl. The really important reason for this is the unique ability called Ice Block. Because you don't have a lot of actual damage reduction in this build, nor do you have a lot of hit points, the ability to be completely invulnerable to damage is really, really nice. Also, since it's not really your job to be in the front line anyway, hopefully you're in the back line where your other teammates can either help you out, or your entire team's dead and it doesn't make much of a difference. The second part that we're going to look at is going to be the chest slot. Generally speaking, there's two popular chests, and that's the Mage Robe, which is taken for its very high damage bonus. Usually people will just grab the Frost Shield on that, because there's not much else that's terribly useful in the center slots to take. Or the Scholar's Robe. This one's taken for the Speedcaster ability, which massively speeds up the rate at which you cast spells, but generally speaking, manas you out extremely quickly. This one's a little bit less popular for that re general reason of mana consumption, but it can be useful. Now in the boot slots, we have two choices. We either have the Assassin's Shoes, which are taken for the dodge roll, which makes you completely immune to all damage for a short time, a great way to dodge skill shots from the enemy. Or the Knight's Boot, which is generally taken for the shield charge. It allows you to give you and possibly your allies a little bit of extra health, which can be quite helpful. Now that we've covered what armor you're going to be wearing as a caster, let's look at the different type of weapons that are generally taken with it. First and most obvious are going to be the healing weapons. The Great Holy Staff and the Wild Staff. Great Holy is one of the most preferred PvP staffs right now, um, that's not artifact at least, because it has powerful single target heals, but it also comes with an AoE that has a knockback on it, something that is kind of unique in the healing trees. Nature staves are a little less popular right now because they don't offer as much burst healing unless you start dipping into the druidic staff. But the wild staff is still a pretty good choice because they have the well of life which allows them to create a large area of effect that will start healing everybody. Now that we've covered the healing, let's take a look at damage and I'm going to go roughly by popularity here. So the most popular right now, at least in my experience, it would definitely be the frost staff line. The main reason for this is the fact that they do well in open world, 5v5 environments like Hellgates and GVG, and they also have weapons that do well in Zergs. Right now, they're not exactly overpowered in any one thing that they do, but they do very well at everything, and you just need to swap which weapon you're using to do it. So that makes them possibly a target for a nerf, I've seen that in the past, so I'm not entirely certain if I should be telling people to go this way. Anyway, right now, the one has staff has a nice snare on it, which you can see in GVGs, and occasionally um, you'll also see it open world, as well as using the AoE Frost Bomb, which comes with a slow, and a nice single target damage, which also comes with a slow. So you can see it's a CC monster, really. The other weapon that's used is the Great Frost Staff from this line. That's because its E has an instant cast and deals damage immediately, and then a second wave of damage comes down, which if you can CC them properly, they're going to take as well. Generally speaking, if people are doing ZVZ with this weapon, like Zerg versus Zerg, for anyone who's not uh, accustomed to that, you're probably going to end up taking the Horfrost Staff, which has the benefit of being very cheap as well, and it fires a gigantic snowball on the enemy, which freezes them still, and it's just an amazing opener. Second most common amongst the uh, caster weapons, or at least most popular, I would say, in 5v5 environments, would definitely have to be the Cursed Line. And that's for a couple different reasons. One, they deal good damage. Two, they have this armor-piercing AoE ability, which is absolutely amazing in trying to get people killed. And three, their E abilities aren't bad either. The most popular one tends to be Demonic Staff. Not only do they get this armor shred, but they also get a healing debuff that deals damage at the same time. The other popular curse staff line is the single target, and that's because of the death curse. Now, death curse does a ton of damage, especially if you've managed to stack vile curse from your other abilities. The issue with it is it's vulnerable to being purged, which many healers will be carrying to get rid of silences anyway. 
But if you do manage to get one off, as you can see here, even at tier 4, it deals nearly 1200 base damage on a fully stacked target. Definitely something to be afraid of, for sure. Moving down onto the next most popular staff, we have the Fire Staves. Now, the issue with the Fire Staves is they do gain a bit of damage. Now, my Masteries are playing a bit of impact here, but you can see that it deals about 10% more damage than my Ice Staff. The thing is, it gives up a lot of CC for that extra 10% damage. Now, you do get a tiny bit of CC off Wall of Flames, which causes the enemy to flee when they touch it, but it's not very long-lasting, and they can choose to walk through the Wall of Flames immediately after otherwise. The two popular ones here that I'm aware of are the Single-Handed for the Pyroblast, which is a single-target nuke, and also the Great Fire Staff, which has a Flame Pillar, quite similar to the Ice Bomb, but dealing direct damage instead of actually having any CC attached. And now we get onto weapons that I kind of feel are a little less popular than they deserve to be. It's what I like to refer to as arrow mages, taking the ranged attack weapons that work well with kind of casting time bonuses. The first one I'm going to look at is the longbow. So, some people might have noticed the deadly shot casting ability. It doesn't really seem to mesh well with, you know, leather or anything else. But when you take it as a full mage, you can speed up the cast time and get an incredibly powerful uh, single target nuke out of this. The reason why we pick the longbow over the other um, non artifact bows is because you can ta you can cast down rain of arrows without really interrupting your Q damage so significantly and it brings a nice slow at the same time generally speaking people just pick up the frost shot with this to get a little bit of escapability because you don't really have time to use your W otherwise anyway crossbows are actually very good at what they do and surprisingly you don't see them too often now the normal crossbow comes with a nice single target nuke but also has Sundershot in the W, which is a single target version of the um, debuff beam that you get from Curses. The other option that people generally take is the Heavy Crossbow. And that's because its unique E actually interrupts casting time and can do some real damage to enemy healers if you manage to jump on them. Alright, there we have it. That is my entire set of builds for the cloth line that I think are easily effective. You can put them together and any of them should work. In any of the cases where you're taking one-handed weapons, just pick an offhand that seems to match your build concept. They're not as crucial as getting the armor set right. And more or less, any combination that you see here should work for you. Pick what you like, and you can definitely experiment around and figure it out. After having spent a bit of time looking at the builds that I mentioned here, I have a couple minor changes that I might want to suggest. The first one is, for healers that are interested in 5v5 environments, consider taking the Leather Merc Hood for the cleanse. Late game, at high tiers, some silences that tanks can lay on you are extremely deadly. On top of that, I've been really looking at the longbow and thinking about the deadly Q, and although the damage is comparable for the cast time, I actually noticed that the mana cost for the cast is actually a lot higher than the other stave spells, which means that you'd have issues with mana. You might consider taking it with Poison Shot and Speed Shot on the W, which unlocks it tier 5 instead. One last thing to mention, uh, the cursed staves don't really have cast times. You might not want to try and take them with Speedcaster. It seems a little obvious if you look at it, but I did technically suggest it. Alright then, next up, Leather Builds. This next video is going to be a little bit more complicated because I'm going to have to go into the differences between GVG and open world builds. It's really most prominent in the leather classes. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see the next one.